And here's an example of that. So um, actually, this is where we would define, this is the administrative uh, piece of this, but this is where you would define these filters. And so here you can see the, the, um, the actual console that you want to apply the filter to. And then in this case, it's incident. And we're going to a filter for the broadcast. So show me uh, broadcast records when I'm on the incident form. Show me broadcast records where um, the filter type, and we can make this optional. Okay. So in this case, uh, you, you don't have to, um, you know, you don't have to use this. But um, at that point, we can then add the filter cr criteria. So we're saying category is or you know is equal to a particular value. And then with that, um, we also have the ability to define the uh, filter logic. So we can group these things together. So we might have a couple of conditions or a single condition, right? And so you can apply filter logic uh, to the, this criteria. And then simply save that. And so what that would look like as a staff member using this filter is, um, you know, for example here, if I've, I've, I'm creating an incident and I've said that it's a network category, okay, the incident is related to a network issue, now I'm selecting a broadcast. Well, at this point, when I select the broadcast, notice that all of those, and I'm sorry my, um, my highlight's a little off kilter there, but you'll notice that the category is that all of them that are listed are network, right, based upon the network category that I had selected on the incident form. So we've certainly filtered out, and you'll notice that, um, that we do have the option of selecting show all results. So if we show all results, now we can see all of the broadcasts that are in the application, including that one general information uh, item there. And then we also would have the ability to reapply that criteria. So if we wanted to go back and filter it, we have that ability to toggle from a filtered list to an unfiltered list and back and forth. So again, these are some things that are very helpful in terms of, um, from, of usability. Uh, there's a number of applications that you can uh, apply this to, you know, whether it be list of broadcasts, list of, of clients, uh, you know, what have you, um, you would have the ability of, of filtering those down, you know, filtering those out. All right, moving on to the next item, and that is service level agreements. So here um, is, you know, BMC has recognized that there's an opportunity to improve the product yet again. And so one of the things that we do is we now support the ability to have define service targets for your task. And you might wonder, well, okay, well, why is that so important to be able to do that? Well, it's critical because now uh, we're typically assigning tasks to our internal teams, right? And with that, we can apply the SLAs to those tasks um, and service targets to those tasks. So now we kind of, um, and, and then that really ties into the next item, which is allowing the creation for support of underpinning contracts. So at that point, if we had multiple people involved, we would you know, have the ability to define an SLA um, with multiple tasks uh, on those, uh, and each of those having an SLA, um, we can make sure and manage that we ultimately get resolution for that incident or for that request by the cumulative period of, of all of those tasks associated with it. All right, another uh, big enhancement in the Winter 14 is the configuration management database. So for those of you that have worked with the CMDB in the past, you probably have identified that there are some limitations and some challenges that it has. And so we actually, you know, to, to be transparent, okay, these are some of the issues that we were faced with, right? In terms of importing data, it was, um, it was quite difficult to do that. I mean, I, I say quite difficult. I mean, if, uh, we, we do it all the time here at, at WrightStar for our customers. But for the customer that maybe is not as savvy with Remedy Force and, um, and the import utilities and, and so forth, it was a challenge because you were mapping data to multiple tables 
And um, it was, you know, not only was it challenging, but it also caused a bit of overhead because we had to use staging tables and those types of things, okay? And so, um, and also, if you did any type of customization with custom fields, um, that was complicated. Uh, the reporting, because we were having to report against multiple objects, that too was a challenge. Um, there were a lot of failure points that, that customers experienced, um, auditing uh, what records were updated and so forth. Um, that, um, you know, that was challenging as well, and then the, the search capabilities. So there was a number of challenges that we had with the preceding CMDB and Remedy Force, and, and obviously we bring these up because these are all things that we've addressed with the, the new CMDB. So uh, as you look here at the Configuration Management Database, um, the search capabilities is uh, much more streamlined than what you had with um, the preceding. Um, additionally, um, any custom attributes and classes that you wanted to add, it's now a much simpler process, whereas before it was a multi-step process if you wanted to add a field or if you wanted to add a new type of asset. You know, maybe um, you know, network storage devices wasn't one of the default um, um, one of the default asset classes, and so at that point you might want to create those so that you group all of those network storage devices uh, together. Well, uh, it was a challenge to do that. Approvals. Um, now you'd have the ability, and with the approval engine in Remedy Force, to evaluate all of the conditions uh, on that asset record, um, and so so that's uh, a much more straightforward process. The auditing, so tracking of any changes that happen with those records, is um, is is much more um, um, visible to to you, and and uh, you have a lot more capability there. In terms of the CI Explorer, uh, there were a lot of restrictions in terms of how the data had to be related. Well, that kind of goes away. Um, so <clears throat> here again, um, you know it. You would have the ability of, of you know, e easily mapping the data in the CI Explorer and viewing it uh, much more easily. And then, um, then the mapping, exporting, reporting, uh, and then even the storage costs, because uh, you know, as as you can, as you know, being a SaaS solution, right? Um, this is hosted in the cloud, you're really paying, you know, one of the things aside from the development uh, work that's been done to provide you the application, but you're also be pay purchasing storage space, right? Well, there was a lot of overhead associated with the way that the CMDB was uh, imported, and that may not be a big deal if you only had two, three, maybe 400 assets, but if you start talking about thousands of assets, you know, tens, and tw you know, ten tens to 100,000 assets, right, that uh, was a, a significant overhead, and um, although that the storage data storage you know is is relatively inexpensive in Remedy Force, it's still uh, a cost that you know some larger customers with lar very large CMDBs uh, were you know were exposed to. So that that is um, certainly some of the advantages to this new CMDB. Um, also, uh, the, the data model has changed. Um, so all the fields from the individual classes are created in base elements. So it's really flattened everything out. So again, we've talked about reporting capabilities, and this is some of the reason why it's a lot easier to do your reporting. It's a lot easier to, to define approval and workflow processes, those types of things. Um, you basically um, adding one field set to the base elements. Um, and then, um, and then you can have base sets on on a per class basis or uh, yeah per per class basis as well. Um, all the related inherent attributes of the class become part of the field sets. So in short, um, everything that's related to your PCs or your mobile devices, it's all grouped together, um, you know, logically uh, within those field sets. Um, in terms of uh, access to the CMDB, who has access to CMDB 2.0? Well, first of all, it's only available to customers that do upgrade to Winter 14. So you have to be on Winter 14 in order to get this new uh, CMDB structure. 
Um, we would encourage that, but uh, certainly if, you know, if there's a reason that, um, that you need to stay on a pre previous version of Remedy Force, just note that you won't have access to this capability. Now, any new customers, which again, I'm, I'm assuming most of you are not, but any new customers, they do automatically get the new CMDB 2.0, okay? And so when you talk about, um, you know, the, the process previously, um, it was, um, this is a, a graphic that illustrates that. We would basically create Pentaho packages to execute with staging objects um, as, as endpoints. So we were writing to temporary tables uh, in the uh, force.com you know, database, and, and then with that, then we were parsing that data out to the appropriate objects and updating the base element. So it was, it was a bit tricky. Uh, for, for that. Now, in going forward with the new CMDB 2.0, again, if you're an existing customer but do not want to upgrade your CMDB, you would have that option. So now you would have the option of doing, you know, you don't have to update your Pentaho packages um, to account for the new CMDB. If you want to stay on the old CMDB structure, you have that option. And But uh, at the other, on the other hand, if you, you know, do want to flatten it out, if you want to take advantages of the CMDB enhancements, then um, you, you would simply, uh, the, the data would automatically get auto, um, automatically mapped to the new structure and at that point, um, you know, import it into the appropriate elements. So in short, um, you, you would have the option uh, of, of either or, with the CMDB. You can stay with the old CMDB 1.0 or upgrade to 2.0 and take advantage of that new functionality. And if you choose to go to 2.0, uh, just note, I'm not going to go in, in a great amount of detail here for this, but just note that, that BMC has provided you a nice migration utility to take the data from the CMDB 1.0 data structure and move it to 2.0. Um, and, and allow you to do some testing. So you can see basically um, you're going to run a scan against the CMDB. It's going to identify if there's any conflicts. From there, uh, you'll you know identify if you have any custom attributes, map those accordingly and in, in where you want to place that, that information. Then it'll migrate the data, allow you to review it, and then ultimately delete the, uh, the CMDB 1.0 data so that you're not, you don't have, you know, uh, a huge amount of unnecessary data in your database. So um, again, there is a nice migration utility, and if this is something that you might need, you feel you know you might want assistance with, um, certainly Right Stars consultants can help you with that. And as norm, you know, as usual, you'd have the ability of doing all this in sandbox first before doing it to your production environment. Another enhancement as it relates to the CMDB is the fact that now the Atrium CMDB, um, you have the ability to easily import the data from Atrium. So uh, if you are a customer that maybe has ADDM, where the Atrium CMDB comes with that, or if you have any of the other ancillary BMC infrastructure management tools uh, that use Atrium, well, now you have a very easy way of um, interfacing that data to the Remedy Force data. And I know that there's a number of customers out there that have ADDM and some of the other solutions out there. So, so again, this will provide you with a tight integration between Atrium and the Remedy Force CMDB. Okay? And basically, um, there are Pentaho packages that, are, that have been created and that are available on the community's uh, site so that you can download if you want to attempt to do that yourselves. Or again, if you feel like you might need some uh, assistance with integrating Atrium, and um, you know, Rightstar can certainly help in, on that front. And it is important to note that it is important to note that the version of Atrium that's supported is 8.1.